I'm Joe, this is Dan, we're from Spyglass Technologies and we're going to show you an installation of our hardwired version of our detected device from start to finish. Danny is our main installer and he's going to, uh, we're going to go over the steps, step by step installation instructions. First Danny's going to run the electric for the red box. We're going to grab power right from that outlet switch. On the beam on the engine. Okay. You got the conduit? Yeah, it's right here, but we gotta find a beam that will measure it. Which one? Uh, what do you mean you want to go to one of the... Uh... We're gonna use this beam right here. Yeah, okay, so... You can tell by the uh, old nail holes right here. Do me a favor, just hold that box up a little bit. Sure. What we're doing here is installing the outlet for the uh, our red, our red box so it powers our device. What Danny is doing is just running a 110 line off of that switch, which is sufficient enough to power our device. Level it up. Screw. Sure. We're running a wire in the conduit. And Danny just finished that installation of the electrical outlet. Now he's going back over to the switch to connect the power. This is actually a transformer that breaks down the 110 power that's needed for the box. Okay. We got a chirp. It's good. The outlet is live. Perfect. I'm just gonna hold this here for now. Uh, you said you wanted to put this about eye level? Yeah, eye level and ear level. And Danny's gonna mark the wall. Okay. Take the box back off. And we're going to put plastic mollies in because there is no beam to attach the screws to. Speed. Nah, you're not. Don't be one. Plastic mollies go in nice and easy. You put the box back on. Okay. Nice job. Okay. And that's basically it. Gets installed to the wall, a couple of minutes. What we're doing right now is installing the sensor on the main house trap. And what Danny is doing is uh, exposing the house trap. Most of these house traps have sand covering them. And we have to get to the clean out plugs. Now Danny's wearing a mask because of the dust. It's very dusty. Danny finally finished digging out the house trap. Okay, Danny, point to uh, the house side of the uh, house trap. That's where the uh, center is going on the house side. And all, and the uh, other clean out is the street side. But we always install the sensor on the house side. 
And what we're going to be doing is removing that clean out so the sensor can screw right in. But usually you have to break the uh, clean out plug because they never screw out. Danny's pulling the rest of the plug out. See the threads? All right, perfect. You have to make sure you get all the pieces. One more thing we like to do is clean out the house trap. Because what happens after a certain amount of years, it starts to build up grease around the top. What we're doing right now is cleaning out the house trap with a simple auger. And we're flushing the bowl at the same time just to get any debris out of the house trap. And now Danny's going to clean the threads on the house side of the house trap so we can install a sensor onto the house trap. While Danny's completing the uh, cleaning of the threads, I'm just going to let you know that you don't have to use a wire wheel on the drill. You can use a wire brush or a uh, two-turn brush, anything to clean the threads so the sensor screws in smoothly. Okay, what we're doing here is just uh, testing the sensor and the red box, making sure everything is working properly. What we're going to do here is press up the diaphragm, and it's got a built-in delay, so there's no false alarms. Give it a couple of seconds. And there it is. Okay, and what we do here is we hit the reset button. Okay, now it's ready to go. And what Danny is doing here is he's applying joint compound for the threads. It seals the threads inside the house trap so there's no back odors or leakage from any sewage water. Okay, also you don't have to worry about getting this sensor super tight. Just make sure it's snug. There really is basically no pressure. Then he puts the rubber cap back on. Now we're gonna run the wire. The guys in the plumbing business call it thermostat wire and the alarm guys call it alarm wire. It's all the same stuff. Okay, what Danny's doing here is just wire tying it to the fresh air stack. And now we're just going to run it over here and staple it to the wall. This uh, red receiver box does not have to be installed right by the sensor. It also could be on the other end of the house as long as you have the access to it. It was uh, tested with a thousand, on a thousand foot roll of uh, wire and it went instantly to it. So You're not limited to your location where you could install the red box. But this is more convenient for the homeowner and for us also. The sensor is activated by the water pressure coming back into the house. Creates pressure on the diaphragm switch, pushes the switch up, sends a signal to our red receiver box here, and sets off an, uh, an audible and a visual alarm. This also can be hooked up to your home alarm system very easily. Now what Danny's going to do is going to pop out the pop out here and put in a Romex connector and run the wire up into the box. Perfect. Now Danny's making a connection to S1 and S2 on the blue bar inside the box. Just remember, it doesn't matter which red or black you put to the S1 or S2. This is the heartbeat on the board, you know it's working. Installation is completed. For ordering our product and finding out more information on it, go to our website www.detectedonline.com.